day everybody uh i have decided since i've had several people comment and uh some good friends of mine that play uh, war games uh, they basically told me uh since this is a brand new game and i want to show the active strategy that i've been using for 30 years in most of these games uh, they told me you know just Instead of just doing a tutorial, tutorial is good because it will get somebody jump started and give them the pr appropriate strategy, and then they can figure a lot of things out themselves. But they told me, you know, why don't you do a, a complete playthrough? And I said, I, th I guess it's okay. Uh, I may not have much time for it. It may be a time period, you know, between episodes and all that, but I'll give it, you know, I'll do a playthrough. You know, others do it. And uh, and a lot of people have said, you know, there's nobody out there that actually has, you know, demonstrates your strategy. And and I've seen it. I've seen these uh, e celebrities play the strategic command game. Uh, some are okay. Some are just absolutely horrible. I don't even know how they even get the views. I mean, they shouldn't. And and they were supposedly get paid by these companies, uh, Matrix Games, and all that. Uh, I get rid of them real fast i mean at least you got to show some competency but i'm going to do this anyways and it may take a little bit here and there uh and this is not something very recent i've been playing war games and board game from the board game period from avalon hill back in the late 70s Till now with the computer simulation games and by no means do I consider myself good at all I am a military historian I study you know ancient history military on it World War II and I use a lot of my historical background knowledge you know to tackle these games and realizing from history what was incorrect and a lot of these games will accommodate a, a, a sort of correct choice. And I've been doing this for years, but by no means am I a good, I consider myself a good player. Uh, there's people that can play this game a thousand times better. They know how to link headquarters. They know every single detail about supply and all that. I am not that good. I just use a general strategy. And like I'm saying, this strategy is to defeat the AI being the Germans and the Axis. And you could probably defeat most average weak players, but against some really good players, it's I doubtful that, that this will work. So this is only for you against the AI. And like all these e-celebrities out there, that's what they're doing is they're playing against the AI, and that's what makes it so uh, painful to watch because supposedly they've been gaming for... A decade. Some of them have been gaming for a few decades. I mean, did they not play the first edition of Strategic Command that came out in 2002? And some of them definitely played the one that came out in 2007 and 8, because they say so. And then these recent editions, and it's like, uh, your strategy hasn't changed. Uh, you have not figured it out. But a second or third edition, what you're doing wrong and what else you can do, I don't know. So... Because people have asked me, uh, I will start a game as the Axis. And uh, let's get started here. And I've looked at this more at this game here, and then I like it. Uh, there's a few things that need to be fixed by Hubert Carter. I guess I'll try to inform him about it, but overall, this is a fun game. I've always been a fan of Strategic Command. All right, let's go. 1939, the world at war. Okay, access decisive victory. Let's look at it. Control Berlin, got that. Paris, London, Manchester, Moscow, Stalingrad, Cairo, Tokyo, Seoul, Chongqing. Okay. Oh, okay. So we got to capture Chongqing. That's going to be interesting. Delhi, wow. Manila and Canberra, boy, for decisive victory, you got to capture a lot of stuff here, okay? 
Allied decides, okay, well, that's not going to happen. So I haven't looked at the conditions for a major victory. I wonder if it's still, but maybe the Japanese have to be included for major victory, too. I'm not sure. World at War Strategy Guide. I'm going to need that. Okay, so we'll deal with that later, but uh, let's play. And I've learned a few things about the Japanese, what to do, and a couple of missed uh, oversights I've had, so I'm going to fix that. But general, let's play this game. Okay, we, everything is going to be on regular here, so... Okay, show moves. Com okay, I'm going to do the show moves in combat. Because there was times I didn't know what the heck was going on. Like, wait a minute, would this unit disappear where? And it was in Ethiopia. So I'd like to see uh, outcomes of battle. So I'm going to put it on show moves. And my system is fast enough, so it shouldn't take forever in between turns. Okay, let's go here. German troops invade Poland. Okay, winning the war in China. We have invested a great deal of effort in our war with China, but a decisive victory still eludes us. Nanning is the last major Chinese port receiving foreign trade, including supplies from the United States. Should we gain control of Nanning, China may no longer be able to continue to resist us, and victory should be within our grasp. Capture Nanning as soon as possible. Well, that's a very good idea, but... All right, uh, and here we go. While well, we need to expand the empire, blah, 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 resources. Okay, under their influence, beware of sending any naval units near Hawaii. Okay, there's a line here. Okay, keep all these areas occupied. Avoid war. Okay, no, yeah, I agree. And what it says is, See this border here? Don't send any Japanese units past this, and you will not provoke anything. Well, that's fine. Okay, and then it's the... I am receiving supplies. Japan is receiving supplies from Batavia. That's the oil. And what they want you to do is capture... Oh, Nanning right here. Okay, that makes sense. That's a good strategy, I guess. And as you can see, I got garrison units in the ports here. All right, so Manchuria. This is the kingdom of uh, Manchukuo uh, under the last Chinese emperor, Henry Puyi. And it's a puppet state under Japanese rule. And up here, Manchuli, Borza. Okay, you have a Soviet army unit, so there's a as a piece, but just a few months before, a major battle took place right here in this area here, the Battle of Halkin Gol, where Zhukov uh, gave the Japanese a real beating. So when they say, well, that's the reason Japan didn't attack the Soviets when Germany did. Uh, take a look here. Okay, let's do Germany first. We're war with Poland, so. And the first thing here is the goal is is to capture Warsaw in two turns. So I've looked at this a bit here, and uh, I am going to first bomb this unit here. Interceptors, escorts. Well, that didn't do any good, did it? Okay. Uh, let's bomb this unit here. Uh, Stuka dive bombers. Okay, let me... Ooh, 
Ooh, this guy's gone. All right, that doesn't seem to have done much damage to Stuka. Am I attacking across the river here? Let's take a look. Yes, it is. Okay, well, let's move up here. Ah, much better odds. Excellent. Eliminated. Spawn Warsaw. Okay, it weakened it a little bit. Oh, but I did weaken it. I tried to attack it a couple times. Uh, one time. Okay, that's good. Chestakova. Oh, nice. I think I want to attack Krakow. Let's put him on a railroad track here. As you see, I want to put the units on the railroad tracks. And let's see. What's going on? I don't like that. Let's try. Slovak unit didn't. Okay, let's. Oh, yes. Ah, he retreated in a bad area here. Let's try. Let's move this guy over here. There we go. Shattered that unit. That's what I wanted to do. And now I moved him prematurely. here. Bring the headquarters unit up. It's one thing important is get your headquarters as close as possible to your troops and along roads possibly. Uh, what are we doing with him? Uh, let's move. Uh, Germany starts out with 50. Okay, I'm going to turn off the sound here because I think that's a little bit too annoying for me. Or keep it really low. I think that's better. Okay, so made progress into Poland. I'm already at the gates of Warsaw. And 
and I would have liked to eliminate this. I think I made a little inaccurate move with that. Yeah, I think I can move him down there. As far as fighters, I don't think we need them anymore. So we can start moving fighters over towards the Western Front. Now let's move. Let's reinforce this unit. We only got 50 here. And uh, let's move him in here. I don't want the French to destroy this resource, so we'll move over here. Why not upgrade a fighter? And cut off. At the gates of Warsaw, cut off at Chestakova. I think I can move the bomber over here. If necessary, I will use them. And it looks like I'll be able to take Poland in two turns, but hopefully I'll have enough units killed off where it will surrender and I get the income. Okay, uh, we still got 11 left. Um... Uh, and my first move strategy is, is I don't want to attack convoy lanes. I will move all my ships northwards to avoid the Royal Navy. Because my strategy is conquer Poland in two turns, attack the West as soon as possible, take Paris, and then capture England. Operation Sea Lion. That's the strategy for the year. The first year of the war. And that's really the only way that Germany can win comfortably. Without really damaging uh, the military at all. It can be done with very few casualties. Okay, and I do move the Kriegsmarine into the Baltic Sea. Put the submarine over here to guard because Britain and France are going to declare war. And let's make sure. Okay, this entire fleet here, they're all going to go up towards Norwich and meet there. Basically to get them out of the way from any Royal Navy. Because uh, the German Navy is heavily outnumbered. You're not going to win going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Royal Navy. The way you beat the Royal Navy is at the opportune moment. Is to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And you don't want to even get the Kriegsmarine out into the ocean. Until France is completely surrendered and the French fleet is out of the game. That's very, very important. I've seen one of these e-celebrities. I mean, by the second turn, they're moving the German fleet out into the Dogger Bank, and they're challenging. He's challenging the French fleet and the British fleet. And I think he lost like five ships, uh, but sunk six of their ships, and he considered that a major victory. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Uh, in this game here, when you engage the Royal Navy, you better have an 8 to 1 kill ratio. And with that kill ratio, once you invade England, you have total domination of the Atlantic. And you can pretty much stop anything coming in from the direction of Canada and the United States. But you cannot afford to lose many casualties in order for that to work. Because what good does it do if you invade England but have no fleet to protect yourself from a counterattack? you got to have a lot of U-boats and a lot of capital ships that can um, base themselves in France and England 
and form a wall, what I call an Atlantic Naval Wall, and you can pretty much keep everything out from that's coming from America. And that's how I played it as the Germans, but in the meantime, just stay in here. Don't venture out there, and don't worry about hitting the convoy lanes, because invasion is what's going to uh, weaken England and the British Empire. And you can do it against the AI. There's no problem. Okay, let's uh, continue on here. Germany 11, did I do anything? Did I miss anything here? Okay, all my ships have moved. I'm in the Baltic, and let's see. It is important to, if possible, move units onto railroad hexes after the first term, because I'm only going to pretty much uh, use units that can capture Warsaw for turn two and kill off a couple of weak stragglers here. But in the meantime, this unit, this unit, uh, the army units, uh, try to move them to the railroad tracks. I got one over here. And this is very essential because you want to, next by next turn, when you have some income, you want to start operating them to the Dutch border. Okay. I think as far as the Germans, uh, 11, uh, can I... Okay, I'm out of money. All right, let's go with Italy. Uh, with Italy, I also don't want to engage the French fleet. I know the British have a large Mediterranean fleet here. It's very dangerous, and I do not want to engage them at all. Until the time is right, a situation will come up where you can actually do that. But now, or... When the war begins around May or June, no. Get them into the Adriatic. Leave them there. And then when the Italian fleet can dominate the Mediterranean, then is the time to come out. But not now. Let's get that battleship in back here. I don't want anything. The only thing I'm leaving out here is the submarine unit. That's just so nothing can enter here. Okay, I moved the cruiser, I moved the submarine unit. And what I'm doing is transport. We're going to transport as many units as possible to Libya. Now, Italy has very little income. So this is going to take a while to transport the armies, but you need to start right now. You don't have time to wait and worry about France and no, no. Uh, there's only one. Italy has to work in conjunction with Germany. Germany is the main player here in Europe. And Italy pretty much is like a client state, except it has its own economy and its own bankroll versus uh, countries like Romania, uh, Slovakia at this point. But later on, uh, these Balkan states are going to join the Axis, and basically Germany is going to be collecting their income, but several of their national units can be built, but it's going to be built out of German income. Uh, the Italians, they have their own income and their own research, but really they should just comp uh, help the Germans out as best as they can, pretty much like a client state. So as far as research goes, uh, don't really, my general goal for re beginning research when you have money is to do production, industry, and logistics. Those are because it's money. To win this game is about making as much money as possible. Well, in Italy's case, it's not whenever Italy has a few bucks, you know, try to improve their infantry uh, and, you know, their units. Uh, don't worry about their industry. And also, when Italy and Germany work together as far as capturing uh, nations and all that, give it to the Germans. Don't worry about the Italians, you know, get, getting uh, MPPs. Because they're only going to be fighting one war, and that's going to be against Egypt. 
And then they're going to have a few assist units in the Russian campaign later on. But that's it, just one war at a time. No, no Greece or no extra campaigns here and there. They're just going to be very limited, and they're going to be have specific tasks. So as far as Italy goes, uh, don't give them anything, really. Uh, give it all to Germany until until a, a decisive victory is there, and then if you want to give Italy some extra provinces just for fun, sure, but not in the crucial stage of the game. Uh, give it all to the Germans because they're the ones that need the money, and they're the ones that going to Germany is going to be the one that is going to be outspending Russia in its final defeat in the Great War against the Russians later. But Italy's job right now is is to build up. Let's reinforce the headquarters because we're going to have to send two headquarters to assist the Italian army in Libya, and you will be getting one, I think, in production here. Let's look at the purchase of Italy. Okay, here, January or February 1940 is going to be another headquarters popping up, so you can give that to Italy. That's going to Libya, too, so it's going to be very important. You want to have two headquarters for the amount of units. Uh, we're going to send this this army here. This one's going to be going towards the Benghazi front, uh, Tobruk. Okay, we're going to take this one, this one, uh, this one that's arriving, uh, the armor unit, and this headquarters. They're all going to Libya. And then... Uh, Want to get some money operate these two air units once they're fully uh, com complemented to 10 operate them to uh, libya too and they should all get there before the war with britain begins and you'll be ready to invade egypt or be able to uh, defend against anything that they throw at you at that time and that's important and i don't see i don't see hardly anybody doing that All you need is this eight unit to defend against France until uh, Paris falls. And then this unit will go replace the Tripoli unit just to guard it. So I think I've pretty much done uh, Germany. it done everything it can in the first turn. Italy has pretty much done everything it could in its turn. This garrison unit is going to be in Tobruk, mainly uh, once the Axis units start advancing into Egypt. You know, just to prevent, if there's in case some little sneak invasion or something, I don't want to lose any. They have to be garrisoned. And this thorn here needs to be taken care of, too, but that comes later. Let's go here. Okay, this has been moved here. Oh, let's check out Ethiopia. This is an Italian colony of Abyssinia. Uh, let's see, yeah. Okay, Ethiopia here is an Italian colony. And uh, from what I can see, it's really not worth wasting much money defending it. Because your main attack is going to be over here, but just had a couple <laughs> MPPs just for try to defend it as uh, best as possible. All right, and now let's go to the Japanese front. And uh, Japan has a kingdom of Manchukuo. Uh, they've been at war with China since 1937. And the strategy here is to capture Nanning. So I think that's correct. Let's take a look over here. Okay, this needs to be, I do see a little gap here, unfortunately, that the Chinese can, something, this needs to be filled. I need to get a unit over here. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, there is a transport unit here. I definitely want to move it towards this direction here. Okay, this
this is under Chinese control, so. Okay, there is a unit here, so. I'm not gonna attack it. Let's go to Rakoi. Okay, this is the Korean army, so we go over here. Now you always have to pay attention in this game by pressing P. Uh, you have partisans that pop up. The full counters like this means that if you do not have a unit in or adjacent to the hex, they can spring up and actually be a military unit. You'll have to destroy so you don't ever want to leave these hexes unoccupied. It's the same up here, but there's units everywhere. This here means uh, no units will pop up, but there'll be like terrorist attack. Explosions that reduce your income and supply, but you don't have to keep a military unit there. And they just happen randomly, so it's not like you want to you want to waste units on those. But definitely keep at least a uh, garrison unit on those hexes here that say P, with 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 not that uh, here this type of units here. You definitely always have to have units there. And uh, this unit here in Taipei. We want to transport it also to Yes, I want to transport it up here and I want to start I put it up here just to prevent any breakthrough this in this direction have to be really careful okay can I leave this unit eventually I'm going to operate okay I can leave Hang Chao Move over here. Not good odds. Oh, we did some tremendous damage on this unit. Can we bomb it? Uh, yes. Missed! Oh no! Should have done it before. I didn't. Ah, okay. Oh well. Ah, uh, they could have taken that unit out, but I'll let it just build, and it'll be weaker next turn. So, take care of that. I'm going to move the unit from Korea. Try to get it down here to where this air unit is, but needs to move to Nanjing. I don't know. I think I'm okay up here, but this is a problem here in the center here. I'm going to have to get a unit over here and get this line here straight because you don't want them just coming down on you like that. And I did that in the first game. I kind of messed up that way. But uh, we're going to get these units. Eventually get enough units to try to take Nanning. I want to check out the reinforcements. Let's get these here so I can see what's there. Okay, purchase on the Japanese. What is going on here? K 
carriers, that's all for later. Special forces. An army is coming up in Hiroshima, but I may want to build some more eventually. And for Nanning, I'm going to move my air units and some carrier units to assist in the conquest of Nanning. I like to move these two armies to assist, but I still need I'll need somebody in I'm gonna have to put somebody in Canton. I'm gonna have to look here for something. Okay, there is a Okay, this one can go to Canton at the appropriate time. Oh, good. Okay, so we're going to have these armies. Okay, we got that. Got that covered. Got this one covering that flank once I power them up. Up in this mountain unit here. So they're not going to be able to break through. And my goal is I'd like to capture Nanning and just quail in Heng Chang and fight here while holding the center and holding the north. Because I know historically, once France falls, uh, French into China, Vietnam, Cambodia, they become Japanese. Yeah, let's capture the road here so now we have a nice front line. I like things to be pretty and dressed up right. Okay, the special force unit. No, it can assist in China too, why not? There we go. Keep a strong front here where there's no sneaky breakthroughs. Okay, this one's going to be going down. Okay, this unit's going to be here or there, you know, just to cover any flank attacks. And no breakthroughs into Nanjing. Wish I had one more unit, but I guess that army in Hiroshima is going to come available soon, but just want to make sure. I know we're going to get reinforcements. I've read the rules. There's going to be reinforcements here, so I don't have to worry. Uh, I generally like to fight one war at a time, and if if I can pretty much hurt China badly or cripple it before the Americans or any other war comes, that'd be great. I mean, even if China... But as far as Japan goes here, I think that's as good as I can do. 47 left. There's no need to lose units on that. Now let them attack here. That's fine. Just save that to replenish. Maybe the carrier. Let's see. All right. The units are spent. And let's see. I don't think I missed anything. I think I've done pretty much what I can for the first turn axes, since there's little income. And let's see what happens. See what the polls do. Let's see what everybody else does. So let's uh, end the turn. Okay, could students figure they're partially formed? Uh, no, I want it fully formed later. I don't want to not necessary. Uh, the paratroopers are not necessary right now, so no. Uh, 
Uh, do you want to set the second quarter? I just have a yes yeah, so or have it deployed in Naples, Italy. Uh, well, I do want to put it there because I really don't need it in Italy. I don't need it anywhere else. And it's going to uh, stiffen resistance when the British attack Ethiopia. So, yeah, let's send it. Oh, no, the Canadians declare war. <sighs> I surrender. Oh, no, Australia declares war. What are they going to do? Throw funnel, Sydney funnel web spiders, drop them on Berlin to bite our people? That's uh, brownback snakes, all these horrible critters they have down there. Oh, no, New Zealand. I don't want to fight against the Maori warriors. United Kingdom, well, who cares? France, oh my gosh. They're going to come out of the Maginot Line and storm Berlin. Yeah, well, that's not part of my strategy, so no. Okay, we got an income 211. That's not much. Like I said, my strategy strives for income. And Japan's not bad. Italy, very small. Well, sending a court to Abyssinia, but and that is necessary at this point. That's why I put it on this. I want to see what's going on, where the combats are being resolved, if I'm losing any units immediately. And Chen, okay, well. It just takes a while, AI, but not as slow as it used to be. We don't know if India declared war, but... Okay, the Red Army begins crossing in the Boer Poland. Yeah, British Viceroy of India declares war in Germany, supplies in the China versus the Hanoi Kunming Railway. Well, we're going to stop. Mine up port. Well, that's not my strategy. My strategy is to conquer the British Isles, so that's not going to matter. Well, of course, we're going to occupy Operation Vesalir, but we'll commence at the right time. The communists. Well, it really doesn't matter. I could care less about the communists because they're going to be destroyed just like the nationalists. Okay, and uh, let's just do the capture of Warsaw and, and Poland, and then I'm going to end this episode. All right, so what are we doing here? Now, as you see, okay, I'm not going to operate yet. Uh, let's uh, finish the Polish campaign.
This was, I should have operated. This was a mistake here, I think. Oh, well. Uh, let's see how to do this. Oh my god, terrible. Ah, this is pathetic. Move this in here. Ah! Gotta get him. And try to kill as many units as possible. I think if we get this one here, uh, Poland will surrender. My goal is to get income. This is okay. All right. Along with the strategy here. All right, I'm thinking while I'm trying to do this here, so I just want to move these units. planning for the next turn, so... Okay, let's do. Can't move them down, so may as well operate them to. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, that's right. Okay, you can't go nowhere. Okay, ah, this is unfortunate. This might cost an extra turn. That's not going to really affect anything, but... And... Uh... 
upgrade the fighter. At this point, I'm not going to do really much research or anything because it's not necessary. Main thing is to operate as many units as possible. But we can upgrade the fighter since. And let's put this fighter up here. Because in the third turn, I want to attack Holland. I want to attack Holland in the third turn, next turn. Hopefully take it, but if not, it doesn't matter. That's why. Put the unit here. And then... Where's my other Panzer unit? Okay, Panzer unit here on a railroad track. He failed miserably. Okay, let's put this one on the railroad track so we can operate in the next turn. I just wish uh, Chestakova had fallen, but that was just a bad die roll. Uh, let's operate a headquarters right here. Start moving this one this way. And like I said, next turn, even if Poland doesn't surrender immediately, it will the following turn. So I've got the unit set up, ready to attack the Netherlands on turn three. This is all good. Yeah, this is... Well, that's how things are. You never get the never get the perfect die rolls or anything. So, I think I'm going to call it quits now for episode one, and we will continue turn two uh, for Germany, Italy, and Japan, and let's see how this works out. But I did take Warsaw on two turns, and I got the critical units on railroad tracks. So, hopefully, uh, Poland will surrender. But if not, no big deal. Uh, we're still, nothing is preventing from the grand strategy. Okay, well, until next time, thank you very much.